congratulations! This year, you're going to be raising rare Blanding turtles in your classroom. You have special permission from the state of Massachusetts to be raising these turtles. It's because of students like you and other students around the state that Blanding turtles are going to have a chance to thrive. For the next year, you're going to be caring for your turtles to help them grow big and strong so that they can survive better by themselves in the wild. This video will show you what you need to know to take really good care of your turtles. Okay, so here is your tank setup. You've got your nice glass aquarium tank and it's filled with water. In this case, the turtles that are in this tank are a little bit older, so we've got the, a, a good amount of water. It's about five inches of water. When you first get your turtle tank, you're only going to want to have a couple inches of water and you're actually going to have the, the tank tilted a little bit so there's a deep end and a shallow end. The reason for that is that when you first get your turtles, they're little tiny hatchlings and they're really not very good swimmers. So you want to make sure that you only have a little bit of water so that the turtles don't run the risk of drowning. Once the turtles are a few months old and they're good swimmers, you can increase the amount of water and that gives them a lot of space to swim around and to enjoy their habitat. The next really important thing that you have as part of your tank is the light. In this tank setup, there's a nice long light fixture, but there's also all different other kinds of light fixtures. There's dome light fixtures, there's fixtures that are uh, built into the tank. It doesn't matter what kind of light fixture you have, what matters is the kind of light bulb that you use. These light bulbs are special light bulbs for turtles that produce UV light. Why is that important? It's because just like us, turtles need the UV light in order to absorb vitamin D. If they didn't get the UV light, they wouldn't get vitamin D and they wouldn't be able to grow properly. Another thing the turtles need to grow properly is a heater. The heater is what keeps the water nice and warm for your turtles. Turtles are cold-blooded animals and if you didn't have a heater in the tank, the water would be the same temperature as the air. And then the turtles' bodies would also be the same temperature as the air. You want to make sure that the heater is set up so that it's making the tank about 80 to 83 degrees Fahrenheit. Any colder than 80 degrees and the turtles won't grow very fast. If it's any hotter than 83, the turtles could overheat. So make sure you always have a thermometer set up in your tank that helps you to know what temperature the tank is and that it's a safe temperature for the turtles to grow. The next important thing in the tank is the filter. It is what's going to help filter the water and keep it nice and clean. Even though you have the filter though, you'll still need to clean your water about once every one to two weeks. You'll empty all the water out of the tank and put nice fresh water in. Another thing that you'll notice in the tank is there's this big platform. You can have a floating platform dock like this. They work really, really well or you can have a rock or something else that sticks up out of the water that allows the turtles a place to come out out of the water and bask under the light. Turtles like to swim around, but they also like to come and sit up out of the water and enjoy absorbing that nice vitamin D. So once you have your tank set up, it's time to put your turtles in the tank and start feeding them. Turtles need to eat twice a day. Generally, we feed the turtles these turtle pellets. These have all the nutrients and vitamins and minerals that turtles need to grow big and strong. And this is how you feed them. We generally like to take the turtles out of the tank and feed them in a container, something like this. The reason why is because if you feed the turtles in the tank, you get their food in the tank and it starts getting in the filter and it can get really dirty really quickly. If you feed them in the separate container, you can just throw out the water and it keeps things a lot cleaner. So you get your container and I generally like to use a cup to scoop out some of the water from the tank. You do this so that you have the same temperature water as the tank water, so it's not a shock for the turtles when you feed them. Just a couple scoops is enough. It just needs to be deep enough that it kind of comes up halfway of the turtle's shell. We're gonna take some pellets and put them in the water. Now that you've been feeding your turtles, they're starting to grow. Every month we want you to track the turtles' weight and length gain so that we can see how the turtles are growing and you can keep track of it over time. So let me show you how to weigh your turtles. Take your turtle out of the water, gently let it drip so that you're not weighing any of the water on the turtle, and then 
put your turtle on your scale. This turtle weighs 58 grams. So a turtle has two parts to its shell. It has the carapace, which is on the back of the turtle, and the plastron, which is on the bottom of the turtle. You can measure both parts of the turtle, but for classrooms, we're just asking you all to measure the carapace length of the turtle. So these are calipers. They're a great tool to use to measure your turtles. So you put the calipers right around the turtle from the neck down to the tail. You then look and see how long the turtle is. In this case, the turtle is 70 millimeters long. Don't forget, these turtles are very important. They're rare animals and you're helping to bring back their population. At the same time, they're also wild animals and not everything is in our control. Some turtles might be born unhealthy or there might be an accident. So no matter what, do your best to take care of them, but don't forget that they're already super lucky to be in your classroom compared to being out in the wild where it's much harder to survive. So thank you so much for what you're doing to take care of these planning turtles. Thanks to you, this little guy, and all the other turtles are gonna be much more likely to survive in the wild, and we're gonna bring back planning turtles to Massachusetts. Thanks so much.